Hello everyone, Crydex here, and today we're going to talk about my favorite use for the new parameterized blueprint feature, which is a one-click bot mall crafting setup where you can craft whatever you want with just a click and you can move on with your life with the requests and the limits already set. It's actually quite easy to do, so let me walk you through it. The parameterized feature is a little scary and you can do incredibly complicated things with it, but for now we're just going to go with this basic bot mall idea and I'm also going to show you how to transfer this idea to things like electromagnetic plants or foundries. So first off, you're going to make your assembler and your basic, you know, you can use whatever inserters you want. We're going to set up the output inserter to connect to the logistics network. And we can pick whatever we want here. We just need to use the same thing for the recipe. So let's just go with solar panels, for example. We're going to say solar panels less than 100. The number here doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a number we haven't used somewhere else. And we're going to set the recipe to be that same solar panel uh, icon. Then we're going to set up the requester chest. Now here, you really just need, you could use these numbers to start out with, but I find that can actually be a little confusing. So I actually prefer to go with something like wood, and then we just work our way across here. And again, we need to use separate numbers for all of these. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. The reason we need separate numbers is because if we used the same number, it would lump them all into the same variable. A little quirk of parameterization that's a bit annoying. Um, so that's good to go for the requester chest. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blueprint out of this. And this is where we start the magic. So this seems pretty basic, but once you hit parameterize, reconfigure, oh boy, there's a lot here. So what we're going to need to do is change everything into a parameter because everything might need to change depending on what you paste. So we set all of these to be parameters. And we'll start with this uh, bottom one. We don't necessarily want 100 of whatever we're making. What I would like is one stack. Now you can even set the ability to manually set how many stacks of something you want, but then you're gonna need to do two clicks, right? You're gonna need to select solar panels and then maybe three stacks. So you could add in a variable here that the user sets um, and then use that in, in a formula for something else. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set it to the stack size of parameter zero. If you look in this list, you can see P0 underscore S is going to give the stack size of parameter zero. So this will return the one stack of whatever recipe we have in the assembler. So once we've done that, now we have to deal with all of the ingredients. So we want to set this parameter to ingredient of zero, and it'll say ingredient number one there. And we just set all of these to be parameter zero so that basically one, two, three, four, five, six here are going to be the six ingredients of whatever recipe we have set in the assembler. Then we're going to set all of these to be formulas because we want to set the amount of each of those ingredients to a certain amount. Now, this is where your preference could easily change how you want to set this up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the minimum function. So I'm going to set that up. It's just min with parentheses. And I'll put a comma in the middle because we want the minimum of two different things. We want the smaller of two different things. And what are those two things? Well, I want either 60 seconds of crafting but at most one stack of the item. Because I don't know about you, but if you've ever shift right clicked a building and then shift left clicked a requester chest and it requests 1500 gears, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't need 1500 gears. This isn't gonna need to be running constantly. You know, you're just setting it up to automate some recyclers or heat turbines or whatever. So what we do is we set the stack size of ingredient one. And you can see here that we can reference that by using the p1 underscore s so parameter one stack size so p1 s so it'll be either that or if we don't need a whole stack we will use 60 seconds of crafting now this is a little trickier but you can get 60 seconds of crafting by using the crafting time and the item count variables so p0 underscore i1 is how many of this we need. So if we needed five plates in the recipe, this would return five. And then we're gonna multiply, or we're gonna divide that by the crafting time, which is P0, oop, I actually forgot what it is. Uh, crafting time is P0 underscore T. So the crafting time of the recipe. So this is how many plates per second we would need, for example. And then we're just gonna multiply that by 60. So this formula is now gonna give us either 60 seconds of crafting, 
Now that would be at crafting speed one, I will note. If you're using a really fast machine, this might only, and a lot of beacons, this might only give you 10 seconds of crafting. So you might wanna change that 60 to something else. Again, up to you. And you might wanna change the stack size to be two stacks at minimum. You know, if you want, if it wanted 10,000 for 60 seconds of crafting and you said you could only have one stack, you could always just multiply this by two and that would give it two stacks. But for now, we're just gonna go with one stack or 60 seconds of crafting. And we're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it in all six of these formula areas. And then we just have to go through and change it to item two. And we're gonna have to change it to parameter two stack size for this little chunk, because we're dealing with the second item. And then again, we need how many, so here's parameter three stack size or how many of item three we need in parameter zero, which is the recipe. So you just need to change the one to a, you know, a four and a four, and then a five and a five. I don't even think there's anything that uses six solid ingredients. So we're probably going a little overboard here, but it's just for completeness sake. Oop, six, and there you go, that's it. So you, we can put a name on our parameter zero, which is the only thing we actually end up selecting, which can be uh, craft this thing. You can name that whatever you want and you are good to go. So we can name this uh, basic bot mall BP test, create the blueprint. And we'll go ahead and put that in our inventory. And the first thing, this was an extra one from a test I was doing. First thing I would do is go ahead and create a copy of it just as a backup, because we're gonna show you a couple things and you might end up breaking it if you're not careful. So you can open up the parameterization again and you'll see it's all there. And if we go ahead and place it, Let's go ahead and pick something like electromagnetic plants. Oh, it's not gonna work. That's because you can only make those on Fulgora. So it will set up all the other things correctly, however. So what about maybe this time I wanna make beacons. So we set up beacons and you can see here, it'll request exactly 60 seconds worth of ingredients for making beacons because the crafting time is 15 seconds. So that's four recipes. And you can see it's requesting 80 of those. And then we've got the limit set to one stack of beacons. Obviously, again, you could have changed that um, when we set up the parameter to be maybe two stacks of the output or three stacks or five stacks, whatever it is you prefer. I think one stack for most things is what I like for my bot malls, but there are certain buildings you know you need way more of. Uh, let's go ahead and pick something that's gonna rely on the stack size issue. So a minute of crafting these bad boys would be 20 crafts, which would be a thousand gears, right? So look at that. It doesn't have a thousand gears. It's not gonna request absurd amounts of gears for your requester chest, just one stack of everything. Now that does mean this building won't run full time potentially, depending on how long your bots take to deliver things. But often in your bot mall, that's perfectly fine. Now, how would you change this to something like an electromagnetic plant without redoing the entire process. That's something that I was curious about at first because I'm like, I don't want to redo that again just to have an electromagnetic plant bot mall. So what you do is you actually don't set anything. You just hit confirm and it's going to have the parameters be the things that it has selected. And now you remove the building. You're going to place an electromagnetic plant in its place, however you want to arrange it. And then you're going to select parameter zero for that one, which I don't know what exactly happened there, but it runs for <laughs> a millisecond. And then you can go back to a copy of it. You can rename it to um, EMP bot mall blueprint test, select new contents. You select this, undo the tiles maybe. And now you can see in your parameterization, everything is still there and you don't have to redo all of it. So then you can save that, and now you've got your electromagnetic plant version of craft whatever it is you want. So we could set up our, our blue circuits. Now obviously fluids are not included in any of this, so you're gonna have to deal with fluids separately. Um, I personally, you know, with the electromagnetic plants, I'll just paste all of these next to each other, and then you can, um, you know, flip these buildings so that the pass through connects them all so that you really only have to worry about the fluid in one spot. 
But yeah, that's it. That's it for today. That's going to be my lesson on parameterized bot mall blueprints. I've found this incredibly useful in my playthrough so far. I will include the blueprint string in the link down below. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And I hope you have a great day.